Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're gonna be checking out something incredibly spooky. So Rockstar did an amazing job of adding a ton of little references and Easter eggs once you enter the epilogue and start playing as John Marston. We've covered this a bunch in previous videos, whether it's interacting with members of the old gang or seeing changes to the world that reflect things that your gang did over the main story storyline chapters one through six and in today's video we're going to be checking out what happens if you return to the old gang campsites and that was a big part of red dead redemption 2 uh, sort of the established gang sites that you created throughout the five different states because that was essentially the entire plot is each chapter you were moving because either pinkertons or lawmen caught up with you so you were constantly relocating you never had one home base, which was cool because sometimes there was a lot of different scenery that ultimately changed. So let's talk about all those different locations so that you can visit them today in case you might have forgotten. So the first location today is Coulter. So Coulter is the first spot you start in in chapter one. This is probably the hardest to get to because it's at the very northern part of the map. It's just a very small abandoned mining town. You don't stay there for long, but that is where you start the game, and that is the first camp that you establish. The next camp that you establish in Chapter 2 is Horseshoe Overlook. This is just south of Valentine. It's also just to the east of Painted Sky in New Hanover. Pretty easy to get to if you fast travel to Valentine. It's super fast, just a little bit of a distance south. Following that, you have Pleasance Point, I think it is. It is just to the west of Rhodes on the edge of the Flat Iron Lake. It's surrounded by like this big giant tree, super easy to get to. That is Pleasance Point. Following that, we've got Shady Bell. Shady Bell was where we were located in Chapter 4. This is just to the east of Braithwaite Manor and slightly to the southwest of San Denis. In Chapter 5, we were briefly located in Lackey in the Bayou. Uh, however, this campsite wasn't really around for long because most of Chapter 5 is spent in Guarma, as you know. And then Chapter 6 takes us to Beaver Hollow in Ansburg. So those are the six gang locations that we're going to be accessing today. Those are all the spots in-game that the camp took place in. Now, what do you need to do in order to check out this spooky uh, sort of thing that we're going to be checking out today. Well, for starters, you need to have completed the epilogue main missions entirely. So epilogues one and two, the main story missions, you need to have completed. Now, side missions are okay, but you need to be done with the entire thing. Now, I'm not sure if this is a requirement, but I had way more success coming to these places in the morning time. So I'm not sure if that was just me getting lucky during the morning or if it really does work best then, uh, one easy way to always guarantee that you'll arrive at a place like this in the morning is if you set up camp, you sleep, you wake up in the morning, and obviously you'll be good to go. So what are we looking for today? Well, we can actually hear the mysterious voices of our old gang members, which is crazy. We can hear Dutch, we can hear Arthur, we can hear Bill, we can hear uh, Abigail and uh, Micah and Charles and all the members of our gang, Hosea and Lenny, all of them can be heard in these mysterious ghost sounds. So take a listen to this right here. So that was at Horseshoe Overlook, and that was one of the mysterious voices that you could hear. That was actually like a campfire song that was being sang, uh, and we were actually able to hear that. That's one of the things you can hear. Now, once you hear these mysterious ghost voices, you won't be able to hear them again until you leave the camp and then return sometime later. And I don't know if you have to start like in order, like for example, going from Coulter to Horseshoe Overlook to uh, Pleasance Point and then Shady Bell. 
I started at Horseshoe Overlook, and I sort of just made my way to the later game ones, but I'm pretty sure you can go in whatever order you want. So that right there is crazy that Rockstar has packed this sort of like hidden secret Easter egg into these old campsites. And I don't know how long you have to wait at them in order to hear the voices. Sometimes I would be there for literally like less than a minute and they would start to appear. Other times I would be there for like five or six minutes. I had almost gone AFK, but still had my headset on. And then all of a sudden I hear this like ghost noise and it scared me so badly uh, because you hear like old people talking that you don't expect to be there. So that is crazy. So that was Horseshoe Overlook right there. We then made our way to Pleasance Point and I was able to hear the exact same thing happen. Check this out. It ain't like that. I think that's simple. It's not this life. I know. So how spooky is that? Like John can literally hear the voices of uh, Abigail, even though, and this shouldn't really be a spoiler because of Red Dead Redemption 1, she's still alive, so I don't know why he's hearing her voices. Maybe it's just the memories he had at these camps. And that's another thing that's interesting too is the voices he hears will be specific to the instances that happens at those camps. Like for example, if you go to Coulter, you know, he isn't gonna have a conversation or recall a conversation that would have happened in chapter six at Beaver Hollow. The uh, sort of ghost voices he hears will be specific to what was going on at those campsites. And that's a really cool detail from Rockstar. So after Pleasant's Point, I actually moved on to Shady Bell. And Shady Bell is the most interesting one, in my opinion, or one of the most interesting ones, because it actually has like an interior. It's like an abandoned mansion. And when I visited this for the first time, it had actually been taken over by Lemoyne Raiders, which is something I didn't know was going to happen. So you actually have to clear out the Lemoyne Raiders before you can actually start to hear these ghost voices. So that's something I didn't know that happened either. You know, after the seven, eight years of the epilogue transpire, it looks like older gangs start to retake over the hideouts that you originally took from them. So that's kind of interesting right there. And what was unique is when I visited this for the first time, again, not only was it just completely overrun by these Lemoyne Raiders, but the inside of the house was also like inaccessible, which I thought was kind of strange. So that's another thing you can do. If this ever happens to you, you're going to have to clear them out. And then the easiest thing to do is just sleep until morning time and they should be gone. And if you do that, you should have access to the inside of the house again. And by the way, I checked out the inside of the house and just like all the other gang locations, there is nothing there. However, it was kind of strange. The only room I wasn't able to go inside was Dutch's room. I was able to go back inside where Arthur and John both stayed in the upstairs of that house. So that was kind of interesting. I don't know if there was a specific reason for that room being locked, but uh, that was kind of strange. However, I did eventually hear voices at uh, Shady Bell, and I'll let you guys take a listen to that right now. You mean like a normal family? Look around you. Ain't nothing normal about any of this. Yeah, right about that. So this is just mind blowing to me how crazy this is. And the final location that I wanted to visit today was Beaver Hollow. And Beaver Hollow, just like Shady Bell in chapter four, you're gonna have to clear out the, is it Muffry Brud or Muffry Blood? I don't know what the gang is here. They're the really creepy like cave dwellers. You have to completely clear them out of the cave before you're gonna be able to access the ghost voices that you'll hear. And uh, so that's what you have to do. You can basically just let them pour out of the cave, which is what I did, or you can go inside and take them out too. It really doesn't matter. Once you've cleared out all of them, you're gonna wanna do the exact same thing. You're gonna wanna sleep, uh, clear out all the gang stuff, make sure you're in the morning time. And this one actually took a long time to get the voices to come in. I, it really was not happening instantly. In fact, I thought I wasn't gonna get any voices here. But when I did, I got one of the coolest ones of them all. It was actually Arthur talking to me, and that was awesome. Take a listen to this right now. What are we gonna do about all this? Not Dutch. Stick with me. The old man. Maybe stop things from going too far. 
So all in all, this is just a super cool experience to be able to take a listen to these ghost voices of the previous members of our gang. And it is insane the level of detail that Rockstar has packed into this game that we can actually hear the voices of the old gang members at these campsites. And this is something a lot of people might not experience in the epilogue because they might not go back to these old sites because there's obviously nothing there for them. There's no more gang, you can't donate, Pearson isn't cooking stew, there's no activities to do. So it really is sort of like one of those cool Easter eggs that you'd almost have to get lucky to experience if you didn't know about, sort of revisiting these old campsites. But anyways, that's all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this and more down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.